Hey guys, looks like it's beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, welcome to British Beer Reviews today. Thanks a bunch for stopping by. I do appreciate you spending a little time with this old man tonight, or today, whenever time you're watching it. Uh, today's beer comes from High Wire Brewing. These guys are in North Carolina. Um, uh, in Asheville. Uh, must be a fairly new brewery. Uh, I don't remember seeing them uh, when I was down there the last couple of times, <clears throat> checking out the brewery scene down there. But it's been a couple of years since I was down there. So uh, this is their uh, 10W40 Jelly Donut. 10W40. Sounds like a motor oil. Hmm. Wouldn't want to be drinking any motor oil. Maybe they're just getting the appearance of motor oil uh, being a, uh, uh, an imperial stout. Uh, but this is a jelly donut. This is an eight percenter, I think. Here goes. Yep, eight percenter. And this was sent to me by Jason and Julie. And uh, it's got the price tag on the back here on the barcode. Uh, it looks like they paid like three ninety nine for it, which is pretty good price for a eight uh, percent imperial stout. Uh, it's not barrel aged or anything. Uh, but uh, let's jump over. To uh, untap, uh, they don't have the IBUs. Uh, it says Imperial Stout Brew with vanilla, chocolate, boysenberries, sweet cherries, deconstructed donut glaze, and lactose. So, lactose, guys, is unfermentable sugar, which usually leads to a nice sweet uh, slash dessert type beer. Uh, so, uh, not don't know what to expect. Uh, don't know if I've ever had any boysenberries before. Uh, but I've definitely had a lot of uh, uh, jelly donuts in my time. <laughs> uh, so, uh, big 16 ounce can. So, like I said, for $3.99, you get 16 ounces of 8% Imperial Stout. That's, that's, that's decent. I mean, I've paid $5 for a Budweiser before. So, I mean, uh, for a 12 ounce Budweiser before. So, uh, pretty good price. So, hopefully, it's going to be a tasty beer. I'm not sure. Once again, thanks to Jason and Julie for sending it to me. Uh, don't know what to expect here, guys, and I'm going to be straight up honest with you for whatever it brings. Uh, says here, blah, 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 blah. says pack age 111319. I don't know what the pack age means. Or pack age, pack age, packaged, stupid. <laughs> pack age. The P A C K is in small letters and A G E D is in big letters. Pack age, package, dummy. Uh, Package 11, 13, 19. Duh. Uh, package. Yeah, buddy. Here's your sign. <laughs> well, we got a package beer here, guys. <laughs> I feel stupid now. How wire brewing, guys, out of uh, Asheville, uh, North Carolina. Uh, I don't know what else to say, guys. We don't have the IBUs. We got the ABV. We got the package package date on it. So uh, let's find out what we got here. Final beer of the evening for me here. Sometimes I amuse myself. All right, we're gonna go straight down the center here on this pour here, guys. Unless it produces a monster head, it is pretty dark coming out of the can. I can see it does look like 10W40 coming out. And being a 16 ounce can, we're probably not going to get it all in this initial pour. All but the last little swallow there. And on the back, I'll show you. It's just high wire on the back of it and got the alcohol written on it. High wire brewing. Uh, not quite, well, pretty close to a finger of head on that pour. It is very, very dark, guys. It's pitch black looking in the glass over to the light. Very nice looking stout. Very, very nice looking stout. So, uh, what do you think? Looks good? Yeah, it looks pretty good, don't it? 
Let's get into the news. Right off of the bat, I'm getting big roasted malt. Maybe a pen of some coffee notes in there, guys. I don't see anything about any coffee being used. Maybe some black molasses and bittersweet chocolate. And like I said, I'm not a familiar with boysenberries. I don't think I've ever had any boysenberries. Is that sweet cherries? Um, not so much on the nose. Uh, deconstructed donut glaze. Uh, with lactose, uh, you get some sweetness. But uh, not so much in the boysenberries and the cherries right now. So let's give it a taste and see what we got. Nice aroma. It's a decent aroma. I mean, uh, is what it is. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Jason and Julie. But I am getting a slight hint of some coffee notes. Let's taste it. Now on the taste, there are some jelly-like characteristics. Maybe that's the boysenberries or the deconstructed donut glaze or sweet cherries. It does have a nice sweetness to it. The alcohol is well hidden. With the boysenberries and the sweet cherries and maybe a little of that lactose, I can see where they can get that combination there to simulate maybe the jelly filling of a donut. So maybe that's where everything is coming from with the, uh, the jelly type taste that I'm getting. With the appearance of Motorola 10W40 uh, jelly donut. So I can see, I can, I can see it. I can see it, guys. Uh, Looks like 10W40, tastes like a jelly donut. Yeah, that's where, I think that's where they may be going with this. So, got a little bit left in the glass, in the glass, in the can. Let's get it in the glass. And sip on it for a little bit. And let's get it all in the glass. To me, guys, uh, for a $3.99 beer, $4 beer, you're getting 16 ounces, it's an 8 percenter, and it's an imperial stout, it's probably going to keep for a while. That's a, to me, it's an impressive beer for that price and for what you're getting. Like I said, I paid more for a freaking Budweiser or Miller or Coors in my day, but uh, none of that compares to the taste that I'm getting here. So, uh, you know, I'm going to sip on it let it come up to room temperature like I always do, guys. But uh, uh, and if you can pick this beer up for $3.99, uh, that's a good buy to me. Uh, and it's in the alcohol range that I want. Uh, I, I can't see anything. It's a well-made beer uh, that, that would be off-putting uh, in the appearance or the, uh, uh, the taste to me. Uh, this would be something probably that I would buy uh, if I could get it here. Uh, and probably should be able to get it here if it's just done in Asheville, North Carolina, which is three hours away. But I haven't seen anything. It's definitely not available in uh, in the Kroger store around here. I didn't see anything when I was in Blacksburg with, uh, from this beer company. I'm not sure if uh, Martin Allen at Barrel Chest carries anything like this. I haven't noticed it uh, sitting on there, so I don't know what their distribution is, uh, but a lot of these breweries will ship beers to other states uh, and not ship them to, uh, to Virginia, the neighboring states. Uh, I've, I've seen them, uh, a lot of times they'll just drive right through Virginia and go somewhere else like New York and some of the bigger beer markets and we don't get them here, but they drive right through here and don't distribute them here, so I'm not sure, guys. Uh, I haven't seen any, uh, anything from these guys uh, around here. So, let me sip on this, come up to room temperature, and we'll come back and give it a grade. Alright guys, I'm back. Got a little bit left here. Absolutely no lacing left on the glass on this one. Uh, decent beer, guys. Not outstanding, not world class. I, to be honest with you, it's probably not even an A beer. Uh, it does have the packaged on date uh, on it. ABB is on it. Uh, I am getting some of that boysenberry slash cherry slash donut flavor from it, probably because of the boiling berries and the uh, cherries, um, just giving that 
jelly donut aroma, especially with the lactose having a little sweeter notes on top of that. Uh, decent price. Uh, definitely worth worth picking up uh, if you like this style of beer uh, for the price. Uh, but it's not outstanding or world class or anything like that. Uh, it is very enjoyable. Uh, I did enjoy this one. So once again, thanks to Jason and Julie for sending this to me. The roasted, even now it's warmed up to room temperature, the roasted malt is standing out more than anything else in the aroma. That's what I'm getting in. And, and, and like I said earlier, just a slight hint of some coffee notes, even though they didn't use any coffee in it. Uh, but I'm not getting those coffee notes in the taste. Uh, more of what they're calling it, uh, like a 1040 motor oil looking jelly donut tasting beer. So, final show. And the jelly donut aspect of it is in the taste, not so much in the nose, because of the berries and cherries and lactose that they've used in the brewing process. Uh, and I guess the 1040 is coming from the appearance uh, being a very dark beer, Imperial Stout. So, uh, I'm impressed with the ABV on the can and the package on date on the bottom, or pack age, like I said earlier. Uh, and for the price, $3.99, that's what impresses me more than anything. Uh, uh, the taste does taste like a, a jelly donut, and uh, it's a dark beer, and it does have the package on date and ABV on the can. So uh, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. It's a B plus beer for me. I'm gonna give it 88, guys. Uh, uh, decent beer, a good final beer of the evening, which it is for me. Not a big beer, at eight percent, but uh, beer advocate has NA because only one person has commented on this beer. So, like I said, I don't know how big the brewery is. I don't remember seeing them when I was down in, in Asheville, North Carolina, the last time I was there. So, uh, and then it's been a couple years ago. So, I don't know if it's a new brewery or what the distribution is from those guys. Uh, but at least they're, they think it's important enough to put a package down date on the bottom of the can and the ABV on the label. And uh, it is a... Uh, shrunk wrap label on it. So they're using a plain Jane silver can and shrink wrapping these labels on the can. So uh, to me, 88 uh, B plus. Uh, and like I said, Beer Advocate has no grade because only one person has uh, commented on the beer. Uh, they used to do that. Uh, but they went back to what they used to do a long time ago. If they don't have five or ten people comment on it, they, they, they say N.A. Over to Untapped, they have it at 3.72, and that is in their B range. The upper end of their B range, not even to the B+. Plus. So I'm giving the, the benefit of the doubt because of what I'm tasting and what I'm seeing and the information that they're giving me on the can with the ABB and the packaged on date. Uh, two thumbs up to those guys for at least doing that and uh, not knowing how big the brewery is and what their distribution is, guys. So... Uh, I want to see that on uh, on all the beers, guys. Uh, give me a, especially if it's canned or whatever, uh, tell me when it was put in there. Don't give me a best buy, best before, used by, or whatever by date. Tell me when it was put in it, and I'll make that decision when I want to drink it. I say that all the time, guys. Uh, I want to know when it was put in the package. Tell me that, and then I'll make the decision when I want to drink it, not you. And if you want to put the canned on date or bottled on date, and then I put... Uh, that's by or used by because I don't have a problem with that guys uh, but tell me when it was put in the package I want to know that and if you can't do that get out of the beer business guys uh, tell me that if you have the process and the means to put print something on there and you choose not to put the canned or bottled on date on there I'm not going to buy your crap so other than that I think these guys have a lot of potential uh, it is a tasty beer. I did enjoy it. So, uh, final note there, Jason, Joe, thanks a bunch for sending it to me. I did enjoy it. It was a very tasty final beer of the evening for me. Uh, I see where they're getting the uh, jelly donut aspect and the 1040 aspect also. 
So, very dark beer. Looks like motor oil. And it does taste, don't smell like it, but it does taste like a jelly donut with the boysenberries and the cherries and the lactose. So, if you've had the High Wire Brewings uh, Jelly Donut 1040, uh, especially, I don't know if I've done it before, the 2019 edition, let me know what you think. Till we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.